In this demo, I'm going to look at some tools we've built to manage terms and vocabularies uh, that might emerge from a, a crowdsourcing project or from OCR of text or a combination of the two. Uh, to give what you're about to see some context, uh, here we're looking at the Indigenous Digital Archive project and this is uh, a project that involves around half a million images of uh, records, some of which are TypeScript and some of which are manuscripts. We have typed reports and we have also handwritten letters and uh, we have photographs and things that aren't so easy for machines to process. However, a machine processing step can generate a huge number of useful tags, uh, as we can see in the example on screen at the moment, that allows us to generate topic-driven navigation and also gives us a vocabulary for people to apply to some of the content that isn't OCRable. So here, for example, you can see that many terms in this document have been identified as topics from our natural language processing pipeline. We've been able to pull out people and places uh, and events and also entity classes more specific to the material, in this case schools and tribes, and that allows us to generate topic-driven navigation. So you can see here, for example, we have uh, Jicarilla, and we can see that we can navigate to a topic page uh, around that topic and see, you know, we can link to all the other pages that mention that, that, that topic. So these, these, these have been pulled out through the OCR process and are now available as tags on, print, on, on handwritten material like this, which obviously is not amenable to OCR in its current form. But the problem with this approach uh, is twofold. First of all, some of the OCR is going to have problems with some of the material. Here's an example of uh, a typewritten letter in the archive, and it's, it's a big job for OCR software to get meaningful results out of this, but it does its best, it tries to identify people and places and schools and tribes and geopolitical entities and other, other entity classes. Um, but it doesn't always get it right, uh, because uh, ov obviously with material like this, you're going to get OCR mistakes uh, misidentification of letters. And the other issue to contend with is that uh, natural language processing pipelines are pretty good, but they don't always identify things in the right way. So sometimes they identify people as places or vice versa, or geopolitical entities as pla people or places, and sometimes we need to correct the, the kind of thing that's been identified. We also want to kind of c condense synonyms together so that, you know, if the same term that we want to treat as a single topic is used throughout a body of material, we can still condense it down into a single topic uh, and not have dozens of different topics for variants on the same term. So we need some way to kind of control and manage what comes out of such a process. And this is a kind of iterative process because a machine pass at the material could generate a good topic set. People could then start using that topic set and tagging things with it. Uh, and then it generates and also generate more terms for things that aren't, weren't necessarily picked out in the OCR. And all the while, the kind of vocabulary is being cleaned and tightened up and made more useful and meaningful for people. But even a first pass, just with completely kind of uh, un, uh, unprocessed uh, entity recognition, can, can do us a pretty good job and generate you know, a great deal of topic-driven navigation just straight out of the box. So what I'm going to do here is show you an example of uh, here's something that's been tagged with, uh, in this case, Zuni Indian school rather than school because the OCR process hasn't identified that L at the end there as a as, as a letter but it's identified it as a, in this case a person so that's not right either and there are some other uh, entity recognition mistakes combined with OCR mistakes on this page and also combined with typos in the original source material so how do we kind of manage all this well this is what our topic management application is for so as tags are created on content via the OCR process and then natural language processing, they get stored in an annotation server, a W3C annotation protocol compliant server. Um, and this application is basically a client of that annotation store and can be used to manage the topics and tags and also connect out to uh, a content management system, in this case Omeka, where the tags are, are kind of surfaced as topic pages. And it can kind of edit and correct and manage the, the vocabulary for us. So if I do a search here for Zuni Indian, uh, I can see that there are a number of results. 
some of which have already been kind of sorted out for us. You can see here that Zuni Indian School has already been associated with, with various synonyms, some of which are kind of semantic synonyms like you know, Zuni Day School. We, we mean Zuni Indian School when we say that. And some of them are kind of common OCR misidentifications. So you can see Zuni uh, misidentified as ZUNT uh, -Z there, and again in this tag. Um, so yeah, so we, we can see that we, some work has already been done on this topic, kind of merging and collapsing. But we can see here that our misidentified topic is sitting here. Zuni Indian Sku has been identified first as a person, but also it's clearly the same kind of thing as this. So what we want to do from this is basically say, okay, let's select this one and select this one, which is our kind of the one we, that we should be treating as, as the correct one. And we can merge them. And just to, we just, at this stage, we just need to confirm which is you know, which way we're going to merge them, which is the preferred topic, and which is the one to merge onto it. And we're going to, in this case, merge our Zuni Indian School onto Zuni Indian School. And it's just going to make sure we understand what we're about to do. And now we have a summary of that topic, and we can see that. Uh, whereas before we had uh, three uh, for Zuni Indian school, we now have four, and we can see that one of the matching terms is our is our typo or OCR misidentification. And what that means is that whenever we feed further material into this process, if if we come across that typo again, or, or you know, it will be treated as a synonym for this topic. So what else can we do in here? Um, we can let's just we go back to Zuni Indian. Oops, if I spell it correctly. Uh, we can see here, well, first of all, we've added our new synonym to our list of uh, alternative terms. But we can also, you know, it, th th there may be, it may be a more complex process than we just w went through to kind of merge things together. Uh, I'm just going to kind of, now this, I'm not going to actually commit these, but we, we could, for example, consider that all of these are might be synonyms or something we want to do something with. Um, and but then we might want to go away and do a different search because there might be completely different terms uh, that we use. So what we can do is add them to a basket. Uh, and so down here you can see now we have we have that term set in our basket, uh, and we can carry on working on and going and gathering uh, more topics as we go through. So for example, we might decide also that. Uh, Zuni Pueblo is also something we want to investigate. Uh, in this case, you know, that's a, obviously an OCR miscorrection. We could also uh, do searches based on existing terms or look at the, the um, uh, topic page that we've currently got for that object uh, or search for other terms that are like it. So here, here's a good kind of set of matches. And we might want to match exactly or we might want to match you know, we might want to do a fairly exact match, or we might want to do a just to kind of show me everything that might possibly match up with this. Um, and we can also, um, yeah, we can we can use that method to to go and kind of condense things together. So, in fact, we you know we see here we have various miscategorizations, which I'm not going to correct r r right now. Uh, we can also create new topics uh, at this point, so we can uh, say. Uh, you know, we have uh, school X, and that's a school rather than one of the other things that we know about as uh, entity classes. Um, and we can also uh, correct misidentifications of what something is. So, for example, here, uh, let's just find uh, uh, let's say so something like. Cheddar Cliffs there has been identified as a geopolitical entity. Uh, probably, maybe, maybe it is. Um, we can see here uh, East Cliff has been identified as a person. Well, maybe he is, maybe he isn't, but I suspect in this case he's actually um, a place. So we can kind of change that um, if we want to. Uh, and we can also kind of remove certain topics if uh, we're getting a particular tag persistently identified as something 
uh, when we, we don't want to include it at all, we can mark it and say, just ignore this in future in future runs of any processing. Um, and what this whole process does all the time is we're, you know, when we actually commit a change, it goes and saves it to the annotation server. It updates existing topics, merges the ones that are necessary, but you know, it, it potentially updates a great many topics in the annotation server, but it tidies up that annotation set into something uh, that becomes more and more meaningful over time, more and more uh, useful to end users because we're kind of gradually reducing noise. And in this set, you can see there's still a lot of noise that needs tidying up. But it's actually quite a rapid process because once you start condensing topics onto onto each other, the, the rate at which you kind of produce a tidy uh, taxonomy is, is pretty quick. So yeah, this is our taxonomy manager, which is tied to the content of this indigenous, indigenous digital archive project at the moment, uh, and also uh, to the annotations that have been created as a result of OCR processes. Uh, but it's really reusable across um, many different types of project because as long as it can talk to an annotation server and make updates in the annotation server, uh, then it can um, you know, it can be used on a wide variety of material and could be used to tidy up human-generated crowdsourcing tags uh, as well as machine-generated, or in this case kind of circular combination of both kinds of, uh, of tagging. And it's a kind of essential counterpart to the tagging process because it allows for that, those tags to become tidier, neater, more useful, uh, less uh, prone to kind of duplication and splitting of things that should be the same topic across many different topic pages. Yeah, that's our topic manager application uh, and we've called it Taxi. <laughs>